why did you bring up the women's? Why did you? How? What inspired you to start the women's centre? Um, basically, because I've lived in this area all my life. I've run businesses. Um, I have got a social work background, so obviously I've worked within the community as well. And it was just the case of taking on something that is running all over the country. These women's centres are all, all over. Um, the only thing that we had near to this was the bridge down at Chester Street. But that was more of a training provider. Whereas we set up to obviously help women who have gone through distress, depression, stress, mental health issues, domestic violence, whatever issue a woman had, there wasn't really any way they had for full support. So doctor surgeries obviously are in demand for counselling and that was taken months. So we got together and I decided to open the centre, brought in some other professional people who I knew would work on a voluntary basis because we had nothing to pay them with. Um, and that's how we started, with a table, a settee, and obviously an apartment that we used as our offices. Um, personally, do you have any experience with mental health, depression, anything like that? Um, yes, my son, um, who he's had um, mental health problems uh, this last couple of years. Obviously, things went wrong in his life. Um, and he had a total breakdown and he was actually sectioned for a while in hospital. So I have seen what these hospitals is like and it's a case of, for me, I think when people's got depression and they just need to take time out, I think really putting them into the hospital, into the psychiatric wards like they do, isn't the place for them. I think there should be possibly somewhere like a respite place where people could go to. Um, obviously the ethos of the centre is we work with women but obviously we have helped down Michael through his problems, but that isn't really the same for a man as what we've got here for the women. Um, but yes, I have seen that. Um, and I've obviously had people, you know, close to us who have committed suicide. Um, and I've had people, and not known, not known that there was anything wrong with them. We basically just thinking, you know, that everything was fine. And they've obviously had depression and other things going on in their lives. Um, what does the centre actually do for women with depression and mental health issues? Well, first of all, um, we, we bring them in. I assess, obviously, the needs as they come in. I'm usually the first person that they the see. Um, we do an assessment on them. And then what we find out about them, if they want to be socially active with other women, they go into what we call the crafting therapy sessions. Um, sometimes some of the women will come in who can already craft anyway. It's just a way of sort of socialising with other women and interacting. Sometimes they don't know any crafting and they just want to learn something. So we teach them skills. But from that element, there is the full support, obviously, of the volunteers and some of the support staff here as well as the support of other women and the share stories and um, the help one another and then we've got the counselling side which we do for the domestic violence side and also counselling for the people who've got mental health issues and it's just a way of helping people really to move on in their lives we also introduce things like training programs we do lots of workshops on you know self-development, confidence building, self-esteem. We have a, a one running at the moment that we're doing where eight of our ladies is actually going into business. So we can help them with all of that to, le to learn how to run a business and make a little cottage industry with the craft and things that they make. And we also help women get back into work. Or if they've came here because they've been on long-term sick and they've already got a job, then we help them to get back into whatever they do as well. And also we help women to go into training and we're actually proud that we've got two girls in a university. Um, Lord, what, what help have you had in the last three years since you set up the company? I set up the company in um, January 2011 and basically it was with my own money, my own funds. Um, I'd sold a business and I'd done pretty well out of it, so I thought, right. I was actually freelancing, working with women um, who obviously had disposable income, who could afford to pay for the services. And also I've got a teaching qualification, um, and so I was doing workshops in the community. And when I set up, obviously I just put my own money into it. Went in for funding. Nobody really took us serious. I think that either thought we were a knitting natter group 
or it was just another refuge, you know, as they put down somewhere for battered wives, as one person actually said. Um, and so therefore we got no funding until one of our councillors, which was Carl Marshall, um, he came along and he offered to help us with a little bit of funding and literally that was the start of it all when Carl helped us out. And then from there other people found out about us, Claire Vasey came on board, she helped us to get the, the rent to secure the, this building, a new building, for a year. And obviously Durham County Council Regeneration, they've helped us out with a little bit of funding, Community Foundation. And then we've had several donations, we've had a little bit off the church, we've had little bits off um, businesses, local businesses who support us. Every little bit helps. But the majority of it does come from the fact that the ladies do make some beautiful things for the shop and obviously whatever we sell in the shop goes towards back back into the centre to obviously keep us going. So what is the link between the Just For Women Centre and Be Creative Crafts? The link is basically, um, <clears throat> I mean obviously the centre's at the back of the shop but the, the, the link with it is that the volunteers that have obviously progressed onto work and um, some ladies do come in who haven't got any problems in their life and basically they come in as a volunteer to help us to keep the centre going and those ladies are producing some of the most beautifulest things um, handmade goods and we are member of the Handmade in Durham so we are with that as well and also we've got Durham Creative that's come on board um, and they're helping us and helping some of the women <coughs> And so therefore the Be Creative side is the actual shop. That is where we have the goods, so everything that's made there is made by the women from the Women's Centre. Um, what's the difference between this is a social enterprise and this is a charity? I have been asked to run it into a charity. I mean, obviously um, when I was going for funding, there is a lot of funders that are favourable just to charities. My belief is, um, you know, as much as charities do some good work, um, there's a lot of costs with charities as well. We do keep everything down to a minimum here. Wage-wise, we keep everything down to a minimum. Running costs, we keep everything down to a minimum. You know, admin, everything that we do is looked at very carefully at the money that we can afford to spend. And with the charities, it means that you would bring in a board of trustees. If those trustees didn't like the way that we were running this, then basically that would be it. I, I wouldn't be doing my job. You know, they could sort of say, well, that's it. You, you know, you're not here. Whereas I did founder this. I did put my heart and soul. My passion is with it. So that's why I keep it a social enterprise. Basically, because at the end of the day, you know, as much as the women run it as well, I am there with the women. And of course, now that they're looking at a cooperative to start making their own little businesses, we can actually help them with that as well. <coughs> So that is why I didn't go down the charity roof because at the end of the day I am still in control of the centre. And what's the future of the centre looking like at the moment? At the moment, um, at the moment it's not, it, it's looking great as a centre. Um, plenty of referrals, you know, plenty of good work we're doing. But obviously it's a nightmare because I am fighting for funding all the time. I have just had this week um, a day where it was meet the funders. And basically, it's you know we, we had a chat with some of them um, who said they could help, especially the big lottery. We're going in for reaching communities, and hopefully, you know that will give us long-term funding, which you know at least I can say well we are going to be here for so many x amount of years, um, and so that's what we're on with at the moment. Um, we have had the town council, Stanley Town Council, they are helping us at the moment to fund different little projects that we've got within the centre. Um, so, you know, they have said that they'll go ahead with that, so we're waiting up there a little bit. Claire Vasey again has funded us a little bit so that we can do workshops within the centre with women from the, the refuge, um, which has started. So, things like that, we're, we're, we're positive on, we feel very positive, but we do need a generate, you know, something where it's generating the funding so that I can get on with the work, you know, to diversify. Because I think really within another year, will need a bigger place because I can do a lot more work with the women if I had you know bigger facilities but again if we get bigger facilities it's more money so I do try to you know get landlords that will sort of keep it as cost effective as we can. What are you wanting from this short film? How are you wanting the centre portrayed? Are you wanting it to go forward for funding? Are you wanting it just to show the lives? Um, I want it to be shown 
I would love it to be shown to, the, to let people know the good work that the women do here. I mean, basically, it's outstanding. You know, we've got, we work opposite the job centre and, you know, there's a lot of unemployment in this area. And it just proves it, you know, with a little bit of sort of inspiration and motivation that, you know, if women are sort of, especially a lot of the women that have never worked or some of the women that have been ill for a long time, what it proves is, you know, by sort of having somewhere where they can come along to and help within the within the centre as if they were doing a working day, it means that, you know, obviously when we sort of like make that little bit extra money, we can have people on paid employment, which we are. We've actually got a couple on at the moment that we've taken on. Um, and I just think that I would like people to see that with really, you know, that inspiration and motivation that it can be done. I would love to see one of these on every high street where it's employing a few people from the community and giving people jobs. We don't have big factories no more. We don't have, you know, we're never going to see things like that. We hardly, you know, we've got big workforces. So little things like this. I mean, for me, I would like to think that Stanley was putting more crafting areas into it, you know, to make the high street, because at the other end of the day, we are looking at high streets, the way that they're going. And I just think what a bit of creativity. And, you know, if possibly the councils helped a little bit more, um, we could have them hubs of activity brought onto the high street. <coughs> so I would love to see this portrayed in the light of doing that. Yes, I would love somebody to say that, you know, we desperately need a little bit of funding um, here and there. So if anybody, you know, sort of seen it and thought, well, that's a good project to, <coughs> to buy into, as I say, yes, that would be absolutely fantastic. But it's, I think it's more so just getting it out and letting people see what we're actually doing here. Good. I'll let you...